जय राधा माधव कुंजाबी हारी जय राधा माधव कुंजाबी हारी गोपी जन वाला भा गिरिवार धारी जय गोपी जन वाला भा गिरिवार धारी यशोरानंदन बजजन रंजन यशोरानंदन बजजन रंजन जामन तीरा बन चारी जामुना तेरा मन चारी जय राधा माधव कुंजाबी हारी जय राधा माधव कुंजाबी हारी अंजाय राध माधव कुंजाबी हारी जय मिस्टर पाद परमहंसा परिवर्तिका चर्च अष्टोत्तर दर्शनी सीमा his divine grace, Srila A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai. Iskam BBT founder Acharya Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Paravidika Acharya Ashtotar with the Sri Sri Mata Divine Grace, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thako Ki Jai. Ananda Koti Vaishnava Ki Jai. Nama Acharya Srila Haridas Thako Ki Jai. Kuntara Chimit Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Samaveda Bhakta Vindika Jai. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glory to Sri Guru and Goranga. So I have text five, am I right? Text five. Okay. Text six. Text six? Yes, sir. How can we read text five? There's no purport. Did you end on text five? And then you just did me, there's no purple. Okay, text six it is. Narayana Namaskritya Narang Chayv Narottamam Devim Sarasutim Vyasam Dato Jai Mudiri before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, we should offer our respectful obeisance unto Lord Narayan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, unto Nara Narayan Rishi, the Supermost Human Being, unto Mother Saraswati, the Goddess of Learning, unto Srila Vyasadev, the author, as well as to Srila Prabhupada, the translator, commentator, and our spiritual master. Nashta Prayesha Bhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavad Gita Mashloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtiki By regular attendance and classes on Srimad Bhagavatam and by rendering devotional service to the pure devotee, all that is inauspicious within the heart is destroyed almost to nil, and loving devotion to the Supreme Lord who is glorified in transcendental songs is established as an irrevocable fact. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 
ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय On the sixth day of December, 2021, in San Diego, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Canto 5, the, the Creative Impetus. Chapter 9, the Supreme Character of Jalabharat. Text number 6. Why does it say 5? Okay. Text number 6. All right. Evam Swatanuja Atman Anuraga Veshita Chittaha Shalchad Yayana Vrata Niyama Gur Vanala Shushush Anad Aupaku Vanaka Karman Yana Biyuktan Yapi Samanu Shishtenam Bhavyam Ityasad Agraha Putta Manushasya Swayam Tabad Anigata Anadikata Manorata Kalen a pramatena swayam guha eva pramatta upasanghita. Translation The Brahmin father of Jadabharad considered his son his heart and soul, and therefore he was very much attached to him. He thought it wise to educate his son properly, and being absorbed in this unsuccessful endeavor, he tried to teach his son the rules and regulations of brahmacharya, including the execution of the Vedic vows, cleanliness, study of the Vedas, the regulative methods, service to the spiritual master, and the method of offering a fire sacrifice. He tried his best to teach his son in this way, but all his endeavors failed. In his heart, he hoped that his son would be a learned scholar, but all his attempts were unsuccessful. Like everyone, this Brahmin was attached to his home, and he had forgotten that someday he would die. Death, however, was not forgetful. At the proper time, Death appeared and took him away. Can we turn this down just a bit? I think it's because I, you know how to do it, right? Just a little bit. Thanks. Purport. Those too attached to family life who forget that death comes in the future to take them away become attached and unable to finish their duty as human beings. The duty of human life is to solve all the problems of life. But instead, people remain attached to family affairs and duties. Although they forget death, death will not forget them. Suddenly they will be kicked off the platform of a peaceful family life. One may forget that he has to die, but death never forgets. Death comes always at the right time. The Brahmin father of Jadabharat wanted to teach his son the process of brahmacharya, but he was unsuccessful due to his son's unwillingness to undergo the process of Vedic advancement. Jadabharat was simply concerned with returning home back to Godhead by executing devotional service through Shavanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu. He did not care for the Vedic instructions of his father. When one is fully interested in the service of the Lord, he does not need to follow all the regulative principles enunciated in the Vedas. Of course, for an ordinary man, the Vedic principles are imperative. No one can avoid them. But when one has attained the perfection of devotional service, it is not very important to follow the Vedic principles. Lord Krishna advised Arjun to ascend to the platform of Nistrigunya, the transcendental position above the Vedic principles. Trigunya vishya veda nistrigunya bhavarjana nirdvanvo nitasattvasto nir yoga chema atmavan. The Vedas mainly deal with the subject, quote, the Vedas mainly deal with the subject of the three modes of material nature. Rise above these modes, O Arjun. Be transcendental to all of them. Be free from all dualities and from all anxieties for gain and safety. And be established in the self. Om Jnana Timarandrasya Jnana Shalakya Chakshu Unmilatam Mena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. I was born in the darkest of ignorance but my spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisance unto him and to all members of Sri Parampara. So here we see a very dutiful father of Jadabharat trying to train his son in Brahmacharya, as explained in the Vedas. He was, after all, a Brahmin. Uh, but Jadabharat was not having any of it. He was simply concerned with 
completing his Krishna consciousness, which had been interrupted a couple of births earlier by his uh, unfortunate uh, attraction and addiction to a little fawn, baby deer. So uh, he tried and tried. He was very dutiful. But if someone is not willing to hear, it, it's, it's foolish. You cannot uh, force someone to learn something if they're against it. So Jadabhart was not being careless. He wasn't being uh, neglectful because he was already on that platform of spontaneous attraction to Krishna and his only uh, desire was to keep hearing and chanting and remembering uh, about Krishna. Actually, he was doing it all internally, just remembering. And uh, so he was uh, not hearing his father. Now, it's interesting that later, when um, he had an opportunity to preach to Rahugana, he did come out and he revealed himself to be very learned and advanced. So for that reason, he did come out. And in, uh, this is very instructive to us because it, what it indicates is that for the sake of preaching, all kinds of um, uh, previous regulations, things that you were following, can be bent or broken if there's an opportunity to really spread Krishna consciousness. Srila Prabhupada followed that. This is one of the reasons why he and not his godbrothers came to America and, and spread Krishna consciousness. Um, they would have, they, they would have uh, you know, the, the idea of a brahmacharini ashram would be, is completely against. Uh, even uh, associating, living with, you know, people off the street, the hippies, uncultured, and ignorant of the Vedic knowledge, would be unheard of for them. It's, 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 it's said right there in the Vedas. One should not live with non-devotees. So but Prabhupada saw that, that, the, that these non-devotees were potential devotees. I was just reading yesterday this key verse Prabhupada would always quote, Kirata hunandra pulinda pulkasha. This is spoken by Shukadeva Goswami uh, in his prayers before he begins reciting Bhagavatam to uh, Maharaj Pariket. So what it says, Kirata Hunanda. Now I don't know what all of them correspond to. I know the Hunas is easy to remember. It's the Huns. is the Germanic members. And the Kashas I know are the Chinese uh, those who are completely outside the Vedic culture, they live in a different ge 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 geographical place and they practice all kinds of things, have whatever religion they have, it's just completely unregulated. So, so it's li there's a list of them. Kirata, Hunan, Pulinda, Pulkisha, Abir, Yavana, of course the Yavanas we know, Kasharya, etc. And others who are born in sinful wombs. This comes up in the Bhagavad Gita in chapter 9, text 32, I think it is. Mami part of it, but you papayonia. Papayonia means you're born into a sinful family. In other words, you're trained from very birth. Just like Aranyakashipu thought that Pallad would be trainable, but he was also unwilling to be trained, right? <laughs> um, so. In other words, you practically have no chance. You know, the family is teaching you demonic principles and the society is not following any regular principles. How can you possibly? The only way that you can be saved is if, if someone comes in from outside. And so Prabhupada, on, on the strength of that verse and many others, and of course his, guru, his, his spiritual master is uplifting the lowest and Lord Chaitanya taking you know, people who are in outcasts and uplifting them. Uh, Srila Prabhupada doesn't hesitate to come right into the bowels of, uh, of, 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 the, of the capitalist system, the uh, United States, uh, into the most uh, materialistic city in the United States, in the world probably, New York City, you know, the home of Wall Street. And in the part of, of, of the New York that was like, you know, e even, even uh, ordinary citizens avoided it. I used to live there. I knew what bar the Bowery was. I, the Bowery was a place where all the people who we, they, we today call homeless, down on their lock, can't even buy a home, they would go there from different parts of the country. It's not that, they were, you know, it wasn't, it may have been a little skid row, but mostly they would migrate there. So there was streets and streets and a couple, you know, of, of uh, derelicts, we call them. We used to call it derelicts at that time. People, they sit on the street, they drink wine, you know. Okay. 
So Prabhupada's right in the middle of that. And he's taking in whatever opportunity he can find to preach. He was able to get a loft. It wasn't his loft. He was rooming with somebody who later threatened him and chased him down the stairs. He went crazy on LSD. But for some months, he was able to live there, do his writing. And they had, he had an interview. I think that was when the New York Times reporter came up there and interviewed. It was a story in the Times, you know. Was. And it was all because he was willing to bend the rules and regulations and give the essence, which was the Vedic message, the, Bhagavata, the, the Bhagavatam's message, the Bhagavad Gita, and of course the chanting of the holy name, Prasadam, somehow or other to attract these souls who were so buried under the modes of nature, but they were, they were willing to associate with them to listen, to hear and participate, and a certain percent of them became serious, even, at that, even in that, that difficult environment. And from there he was able to get a big, better place and the whole movement grow from there. So uh, that's, this is a, a, a very instructive that for preaching, uh, anything can be done. And you'll find so many people who are not willing to hear, just like you know, Judd Barrett is not willing to hear for a special reason, because he was internally um, always experiencing Krishna. But just like Judd Barrett came out and he saw Rahugana, it was an opportunity to preach. And one thing we should know, you know, this, this, his, his wonderful teachings, which we're going to he- hear in a few weeks, for the next few weeks, um, uh, were then recorded in the Bhagavatam, and they're going all over the world, you know, in all these different kinds of languages, and they'll be go- and they'll be uh, available for thousands and thousands of years. So that that one decision to break his uh, jada, you know, profile. Deaf, dumb, blind, I don't know anything, can't know anything. And it came out, and it was, it was very well, uh, very intelligent to do that. Now, Prabhupada is a nice purport here, as they all are, but he's, uh, first of all, he's talking about how one could be too attached to family life. So here was his father, who was attached, he was the eldest son, you know, he wanted to train him. Now, in one sense, he's admirable, because he's, you know, doing his duty as a father. Even though his son was slow, he thought, so, we, we, we have this word, isn't it, that they still use it, a, a slow, slow as a, as a noun, right? <laughs> Someone who can't learn anything, you know. So he thought his son was a slow, but he still continued to teach him and try as best he could, even to the point of death, uh, his own death. So Prabhupada makes that point that uh, he, he was so attached, you know, he sees it that way, that this is a, a sign of attachment to family life, attached to family five people remain attached to family affairs and duties. Uh, but the duty of, really, duty of human life is to solve all the problems of life. So how is that possible? The problems of life include, you know, uh, old age, disease, and death, and the threefold miseries, um, and the inevitable disappointments that come from your, your, your your wife, your husband, your uh, offspring, not living up to your expectations, or even become enemies in the house. This is explained in his teachings in the uh, Forest of Enjoyment coming up. Uh, so, Papa is making the point that you get so wrapped up in your family affairs that you forget that death is coming and it's going to erase the whole thing. It's just like, w- w- Papa gives this analogy, you know, I... Uh, it's a Bengali statement. Oh, I'm, I built this house, you know, and then uh, it burned down, you know. It, the point is you put so much effort into something, building a persona, building a uh, profile. Uh, you have so many relationships and so many things you're absorbed and that's what you're worried about. You know, even the body is always taking your attention, you know. Uh, but you put all your attention there, but it's, it's futile. Ultimately, the whole thing is destroyed. It's completely wiped away. So it's entirely meaningless. And Prabhupada explains, he mentions that, and not in this purport, but in, uh, I think, the next one. This idea of Shama Eva He Kevalam. He quotes from the second chapter, first canto. Uh, what is that? Dharmak svanasthitak pung sam vishvak sena katasuyak not pariye jadidatim shama Eva He Kevalam. So here he's descri- this is describing Dharma to Kama Moksha. And he's describing Dharma. So in this case, he's saying, Varnashram Dharma, if you're simply uh, doing very expert work in your Varna or your Ashram, 
You know, you're f fulfilling all the, just like here, you know, all of these things that he's trying to teach his son. Uh, but it's not increasing your desire to hear about Krishna. It's not increasing your interest in the absolute truth. Then all of that expertise and all of that effort is completely wasted and useless. Shama evihi kevalam. This is the real tragedy of, of material life, human life, that has no tinge of uh, Krishna consciousness is that it's such, it's such a waste of the opportunity, which is the superior intelligence of human beings, where you actually can try to solve all the problems of life and get out of this bondage of birth and death and old age and disease. It's just like this is Durga means a jail. We're in a jail here. We're in a, you know, and sometimes we may have a nice cell and we think we've, we've succeeded. Prabhupada always gave the example of, um, the, the man is sleeping in the, the 23rd story of a, of a skyscraper a building or hotel, and the dog is sleeping on the street, but they're doing the same thing. You know, there's there's no no qualitative difference between the two. The dog is eating something out of the garbage can. And the guy is eating some fancy thing in a restaurant. The same thing. Sex life is the same thing. So eating, sleeping, mating, defending. We share these with the animals. What is that? Ahara nidra bhayamaitarangsha samanyamid pashubi naranam. The pashubi, the animals, and the naranam, the human beings share these four functions, eating, sleeping, mating, and fearing. We say defending. You know, we're fearing, and, we, and even the animals, they also have this strategy for defending, fight or flight, whatever. So, with that, so what's the difference? That the difference between human life and animal life is dharma. If human life has no real dharma, it's nothing but polished animal life. This nice little uh, word that I think comes up in the Bhagavatam. Dri pada pashu. Two legged animals. Human beings. We have two hands that used to be legs, and we use them for so many things. But the, but the essential <laughs> nature is not different. So, Prabhupada, uh, you know, following the line of his spiritual master in, in Lord Chaitanya, uh, he felt the urgency. Prahlad Maharaj was a great ideal, you know, felt. He, he, for, for himself, he had no problem. Sit in Vrindavan, chant Hare Krishna, go, you know, and, and enter into the Nitya Leela. Yeah. Uh, but for everyone else, he had a problem. That's what Paraduka Duki means. Who can say what that means? You never know what that is, Govardhan? Paraduka Duki? I know, but I asked Govardhan. <laughs> he was speaking. You didn't hear him because he had the mask on. <laughs> Anyway, it's okay. Yes, it means uh, feeling the pain of others as one's own pain. Commonly called empathy. Without any empathy in the human heart, it's just a de demonic. Worse than the animals. The animals can kill a few other animals, you know, maybe some human beings. But human beings can do it wholesale. You know, <laughs> they can kill thousands or even millions of people. So which is the worst? So, so that Paraduka Duki mood is there amongst the great Vaishnavas. Pallad famously said, I have no problem. Personally, I can just chant your glories and, and immerse my mind in an ocean of nectar. And we all can do that. And we should. You know, we absolutely should. Because that, then we can experience the actual value of the medicine that we're trying to give out. Krishna consciousness. You know. So, um, so, so Pallad famously said in his prayers that uh, I have no problem, personally, but I do have a problem with all of these poor uh, mudas who are trying to enjoy maya sukaya, flickering, illusory happiness, and thus staying bound in this world of suffering. That very happiness is their, their bonds, their desire to experience it again and again, which you can't. The body is limited. It's very flickering. That's what maya sukaya means. So uh, then he condemns those who have some knowledge that this is not our home, we should try to get out of it, but simply try to get out themselves. For the most part, he says, though the people are uh, what do you say? Mukti kama. Mukti means my own mukti. I'm it's just like you're in a burning house, you know, and there's people inside, maybe even your own children, this has happened recently, and, and, and parents just ran out of the house. Let their own children burn. 
This is, this, this is what, what, what happens in this society. The heart becomes so cold and so self-centered that even love for your own children is negated. It happens with drugs, too. I, I mentioned this before, the, the crack cocaine. You know, you had parents letting their children starve while they're taking crack cocaine. It's just horrible to even think about. But this is the extreme na nature where the, the Vaishnava heart is so soft, you're ready to die to try to give Krishna kindness. Prabhupada would, would praise uh, G Jesus Christ as a great example of that. And of course, we know Vasudev Dutt was ready to take the sinful reactions. He really was ready to suffer for e eons so that everyone else could be delivered. Inconceivable. Lord Chaitanya cried when he saw, heard that and he embraced him, you know. So don't worry, don't worry. By your desire, you don't have to suffer that. You know, that they'll be delivered and by Lord Chaitanya. So, so the duty, no, but here it's interesting because it starts with one's understanding and one's also effort to get out himself by practicing Krishna consciousness. This is, this is not a bad motivation, especially at first. That well, I want to get out, you know, but the, but it means you ha you should have to do it by the process of devotional service, which leads you to uh, your heart to soften so that you want everyone else to get out also. So here he says the duty of human life, not you know the, all of these material duties, supporting the family and so forth. If it's just just supporting the family, there's no tinge of Krishna consciousness, then it's the bonds of, of illusion. So. But uh, one should finish their duty, should accomplish the duty of human life is to solve all the problems of life. So what are the problems of life? We know. Birth, old age, disease, and death, threefold miseries. Again and again and again and again and again. That's the problems of life. So uh, how to get out of it? By becoming Krishna conscious. But in the course of becoming more and more Krishna conscious, one's all, one is less and less concerned with his own welfare. Is on you know therefore Lord Chaitanya famously says Mama Janmani Janmani Shude that I what I don't want is Nadanang Nadanang Sundarim Kavitam Kavitam can mean different things it can mean like great uh, learning you know Mama uh, Janmani Janmani I don't don't even want I don't even want liberation that's why I say birth after birth so what does he want do you remember Tyler what does Lord Chaitanya say I do want I'm praying for yeah, yeah, pure devotional service. Ahoytuki, uh, without material motive. Ahoytuki bhakti. That encompasses everything. You don't have to worry about liberation. Even in this very life, you, you're liberated. Famously, what is that? Uh, How does it start? Uh, what is it? It's the Jivan Mukta. Um, one, one, God, I can't believe I forgot that one. But you know what? <laughs> you can't even remember. Was that, was that the one you were given? Yeah, well, that, that's describing the impersonalist who sees things even related to Hari as um, a material. But anasakta sabishiyan is the description the Bhairagya gives. Yeah, that leads to that. that you, but, but this is uh, specifically Prabhupada would quote this first. Now, the word iha with long I, long A, means activities. I, one whose activities, what activities? Yes, karmana manasagada means the active senses and the, the, the knowledge acquiring senses and the voice. In other words, all one's activities. Nikola Shaptiva Jivan Mukta Suchate. Hare Dase, they're all engaged in serving Hari, then even in this lifetime, one is considered a, a Jivan Mukta, a liberated Jiva. Even though, you know, you're not merged in the Jamama Jodi, of course, you're not back, you're visible, but you're liberated. And Prabhupada certainly was on that platform, you know. So, therefore, the devotees don't worry about liberation after a while. They just worry about staying in Krishna consciousness and refining their Krishna consciousness and giving Krishna consciousness out. So that, that's the, the ultimate duty of human life, to, uh, to solve the problem of life birth, age, by becoming Krishna conscious and uh, immersing oneself in an ocean of nectar and giving it to as much people as possible. Now this is, this is really epic because Prabhupada repeats this. Although they forget death, death will not forget them. Then he repeats it. One may forget that he has to die, but death never forgets. <laughs> so this, the, you know, the inevitability... 
In other words, people are wondering about the future. You know, what's going to happen? Is there going to be a war? Is, it, is the stock market going to crash? You know, what's going to happen to me? Am I going to get sick? Oh, I better get a vaccination. You know, and that, but they're worrying about the future, but they're not worrying about the ultimate future. <laughs> what's really coming in the future, which is death. They know it's there, but they think, well, there's nothing we can do about it in terms of death itself. So that's not my main problem. But, but that, death, you know, is not the end. It's just a transi transition to your next life. That's, the, that's why that's the first lesson. If one accepts that, Dehi no dehi, which culminates in tata dehi hantara prabdir, you get another body. That should, it should, change your whole, if, you're on, if you believe it, and you're really you know, saying, yeah, this is the truth, this should change your whole idea of what, sh what, sh what you should strive for, what should be your goal in life. Because it really, uh, you know, makes all of the, the, go the goals that are bound in this life absurd. If there's eternal life, then, what a, then, then I want to try to uh, inquire, is there an eternal life without death and rebirth? Which makes everything, every other endeavor absurd. These, you know, that's uh, the first, uh, uh, you know, lesson. And... I remember when I was working with Back to God at early, you know, in the mid-70s, back in the 75 and everything, there was uh, a real effort, and we found evidence for it, that even empirically there's effort for, there's, there's a lot of evidence for reincarnation. There's Ian Stevenson, I don't know if that, you, you remember him, I don't know if anyone else remembers that name. You know. Yeah, he was a, a Western like, psychologist, I think and a uh, scholar, you know, PhD, and he was in a university and he was doing this research. He may have been exposed to some people who had this near-death experience, because that was also happening. People die, they almost die, you know, they're flatlining and the doctors rush in. I used to be in a hospital, they do epinephrine, they try to revive you, but the, mostly it doesn't work. And it ends up with 2.31 p.m., December 2nd. You know, that, that, no, for, the, for the records, this is the time when dead. But uh, occasionally, they come, they come back in, and then occasionally, occasionally, some of those people say, yes, I, was, I was, seemed to be floating near the ceiling, and I witnessed everyone rushing in, and he names the doctors. And, you know. <laughs> so he investigated those. There was a, another book that did that, which indicated, oh, okay, so that all of the body can be dead, basically, but still you're alive, and then you can, you know, they can revive you, rarely. But, but, but he would investigate these cases, mostly in India, of children who would, you know, all of a sudden, when they could, so they could speak, they would tell the mother, you're not actually my mother. Actually, I, I belong to this other family. It may just be 50 miles away or even 30 miles away, because they never, you know. And this happened, and I, this was my name and everything like that, and the parents don't know what to think. Although it's ca common enough in India where they know it, you know, it may happen like that. So he wanted to investigate, is this for real? You know, so he would, he would go to the other place and he would investigate, was there a person named uh, uh, Anu, Anu, Anu Jalota who uh, died recently? Yes, you know, she had, and did she have a little niece? Yes, you know, or whatever. In other words, it, it, would, it would actually pad out. And what the kids would say would be, so it turned out to be true. There's no way. They wouldn't even, you know, this, these are little villagers. They would never travel more than 30 miles. This is like 100 miles away or something. So he compiled a whole book of those, you know, and we quoted one or two. In, there's an article by Jay Maharaj where he just focused on one of those. We had a little picture. So the idea is, okay, there's all this empirical instance now, you know. And here's, here's the Bhagavad Gita, where Krishna is saying, and this is the basis of his teachings. So s some people in America who are scientifically minded, they would become attracted by that, you know. But the whole, the whole point is, is that it opens up. Your, it should open up anyway your consideration of what is life, what is life really? Who am I? I'm, I've been, you know, thinking I'm this body all this time, I, you know, but now I realize, well, but the body's going to die, but I'm going to go on, so what is that? You know, and then, okay, the soul and eternal need, the supreme soul. So it, it, it was an effective way of preaching. Uh, so so the, 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 um, the mission is, for those who are intelligent and take this knowledge seriously, is to find out how and why, you know, how does transmigration take place? And the big question is, what determines what next body you got? And of course, Krishna explains the consciousness you develop in this life. Yad yad, uh, vibhut, uh, yad, yad, achit, 
Yang Yam Vabi, boy, my brain is going. Yang Yang Vabi Smarang Bhavam Chajit Jante Kalevaram. Tam Dame Vaiti Kondriya Sadhata Bhavita. It's a general principle, eighth chapter, very important section right near the beginning there, where Krishna's answering questions. Whatever, this, when you repeat like that, yum yum or yad yad, it means whatever. Whatever a great man does, he come and follow. Whatever is the prominent thought that you're thinking of at the time of death, that will determine your next body. So one may think, oh really, my God, you know, I've been playing too many video games and watching these horror movies, what am I going to think of? Yeah, you should really think like that. <laughs> and what's the, what's the alternative? Okay, well, you visit the Hare Krishna movie, you read this book, and you can see this is a whole... The, the subject matter of Krishna consciousness, beginning with chanting the holy name, this can uh, purify your mind, your heart, your thoughts, and you can actually successfully leave the body and not come back. That's the last chapter of, of coming back, right? Mukunda Maharaj, don't come back. <laughs> so that, you know, now Judd Bard here, he was already there. You know, he, was, he was, uh, had, had practiced Krishna consciousness. He just wanted to remain and he saw this, all this other stuff as a distraction. So he remained immune to that. He wasn't going to get involved. But that, that's a special case. And, uh, but the, the, the import of the whole uh, purport, or, or good part of it, is that death is coming. You know? Death will not forget you. It's coming. We've seen now in the last uh, month and a half, you know, two of these prophets, stalwart devotees, pass away. Uh, Sura, of course, we were, you know, it, it was a miracle that he w remained in his body so long. It was a lot of determination, and he did so much preaching, a wonderful devotee. But Rajendranandana, no, no, no one accept, expected. He was so, you know, but, but this, this, when the time is there, it's, it's there. So, uh, you know, both of them passed away with the whole holy name being chanted near their bedside. It's such an important thing that you, you're, you're dependent on your god brother, god sisters to help you go, you know, to make sure that your consciousness, because it's really at that point you can't do much on your own. So, so we're, we're preparing for that. We should understand, yes, we don't know when it's going to come. It, it, you know, I'm, I'm uh, more, more than twice as old as some of the devotees here. Um, 20, 30, 40 years, 50 years older. Um, somehow I've stayed in this body. I've been able to do a little service for Prabhupada. But the whole thing is, well, okay, how are we improving our Krishna consciousness, deepening our Krishna consciousness from moment to moment? Really, again, I, I come back to this, I really, you know, again, um, how, how addicted are we becoming to Krishna consciousness? It's just like that, where you, you can't live without it, right? Someone who's totally addicted to a, a drug or alcohol, got to have it. You get this, this, you know, push from the body, you know. Even though your mind is... is and you're, you're, you're dement, lamenting that you're in the thrall of this drug, but you can't do anything about it on your own, certainly. So we want to become so addicted to Krishna and the service to Krishna that we can't live without it. At every moment, you know, we're thinking, what, what is Kayena Bacha Manasindriyava, this beautiful verse in the 11th Kano, uh, describing the, the highest devotees, the Uttamadikari, with every uh, everything they do with the body, with the words, with the intelligence, with everything they have, at every moment they're saying, this is an offering to Narayan. Or the, thought, the thought is there. This is a, and it really is. I like to point out Prabhupada, when he, he would answer the phone or do anything, there was a different, he was doing it with great attention. You know, this is, I'm answering the phone for Krishna. You know, and every word, every action was, was uh, connected to Krishna as, as service, as different varieties of service. So that's the sign of the Uttam Adhikari, of the great devotees, Paramahamsas. Every breath, every word, every step uh, is, is, is dictated by the desire to serve Krishna. And, and it's done with love. The prema is there. The, it, 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 this is the, the uh, ultimate end of it. Because Krishna is so attractive. He's, we can't even imagine how attractive it is. Those who uh, are interested, I recently reread this chapter called The Opulence and Sweetness of the Lord. Uh, it's chapter 22, I believe, of the Madhya Leela. And Lord Chaitanya is going through this with Sanat and Sanatana is explaining different avatars. 
And suddenly he, rem he, he goes into this trance, he remembers the sweet beauty of Krishna, and then there's this whole interlude where he's just describing it one after another. That verse, that famous verse, Maduram Maduram Babarasivabo is quoted there. You know, sweet, sweet is my dear Lord's form. And uh, we can't even uh, conceive in, our in the material state how attractive Krishna is, the beauty, you know. And the beauty can encompasses everything, not just the form, but the sound and the, and, and the fragrance. Every sense is, is, is you know, uh, attracted by Krishna. And that uh, just uh, awakens, you know, pure love. So that is... Uh, we want to experience that. And then there's no going back. Everything in the material world is like dull. You know, not, it doesn't have a tinge of attraction. Just I, was, I was just going over you know, the Bhagavad Gita and we're trying to f finalize the Bhagavad Gita forever, if we can. And in and one, and one place, you know, probably this, he says, uh, Haridas Thakur was similarly allured by Maya Devi. You know the, the, the man. He was, he was allured by Maya Devi. And of course he completely avoided getting attracted. Uh, twice, once by a uh, prostitute sent by um, Ramchandra Khan and once by Maya Devi herself. But actually he wasn't a lord because he had, what is the meaning of a lord? A lord means that you're attracted. You're attracted. And maybe you don't, don't do it, just like the word tempt. Tempt has with the connotation that yeah, I was attracted, but I resist, resisted. Isn't I was I was tempted to go to, in, in the movie house, but I I didn't go, you know. But Haridas wasn't tempted. He wasn't allured. He had no <laughs> attraction at all. You know, it was like a dead stone sitting in front of him. He, didn't, he wasn't attracted. We would be allured, but you know, if we're in, strong enough, we wouldn't actually do anything. So so like, we had to change that. It wasn't that Haridas Thakur was allured. That Maya Devi tried to allure Haridas Thakur, but failed. You see what I'm saying? So that's, that's the high platform, where the material energy has no way of alluring you, like Yamanacharya. You know, even just remembering his previous experiences is disgusting. You know, it's not like, oh, you know, I have to, I have to be sure not to think of that. I get, you know. No, it's just like, forget it. So then where is the attraction? It's all the Krishna, every moment. That's, that's the whole point of the verse. Yadavadi mama cheta krishna padada vende nava nava nasadama nyuditam rantamasim. Nava nava, that ever since I've been experiencing ever new bliss, serving the lotus feet of Nanda Nandana, Krishna, since then, whenever these thoughts may cross my mind, because you never know what's going to come up from your mind, you know, memory. So I just, it's, it's, you know, I, 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 I spit at the thought. I spit at the thought. It's not even attractive. It's disgusting. <laughs> Isn't that, you know, that's, that's a, a very high platform. It only works, though, when you're able to be attracted at every moment, when you're feeling bliss in your service, no matter what it is. The very, just read the Anjali, the Chaitanya Charitamrita, and you see the standard that Lord Chaitanya set. This is the movement we come in. You know, we'd see a cloud, and suddenly he'd remember Krishna's form, and he would go into ecstasy, you know, or hear one verse. And then he would repeat one verse again and again, or he had Surab Dhamma to do it. I remember when I first read that, Rase hadami habihita bilasam smadati manomam akutapati hasam. You may not remember this. It was a, it's a line from one of the songs in the uh, Gita Govinda. But, you know, it's like, this is like the, the refrain. Rase, which means Rase, here in the Rasa dance, Rase hadam iha, I remember hari. Rase hadami habihita bilasam, as he was performing his pastime. Smadati Mano, my mind remembers. Smadati Mama Krita Padihasam, as he was laughing and joking amongst the gopis. Padihasam. So he heard that, he just went into, he started dancing and going on. He said, Keep on chanting. And Subhadama was chanting, chanting, chanting for who knows how many hours. I mean, finally, you know, Lochitanya was <laughs> exhausted, <laughs> but he wouldn't want to stop. And finally, Subhadama would stop and pacify. You know. This is what you find in the Antilipa. So you can imagine how it's, you know, we hear the name Krishna and all, oh, you know, tears begin to flow. Can you imagine how wonderful that would be? And that means that the heart is completely pure, it's clean, it's, there's no other desire there. And Krishna has filled the heart with attraction, you know, with his beauty and his pastimes, his qualities. So this is, this is, uh, Jada Bharat was aiming for that. He was already, you know, he's going for that. He said, forget about these Vedic instructions and Brahminical, I don't need it. So he refused. And uh, 
for someone like that, death has no uh, fear. You know, just like you read with Druva, right? When Druva, <laughs> death finally came for Druva, and uh, he, he put his foot on the head of death and got into the Vaikuntha airplane. <laughs> That's to describe. In other words, it held no terror for him at all. The the the, the uh, Vaikuntha, the Vishnu Duras came back and he, you know lifted him in. And then he was worrying about his mother. Oh, I wonder about my mother. She's because she told him to go to the forest. This she says, "Oh, don't worry. There's an airplane behind. She's in the airplane. There's <laughs> another airplane for her." So that's uh, you know, the death holds no fear and no terror. We saw that with through the Prabhupada. He was amazing. You know, completely composed. You know, and and thrown the the word the, the lead up. You know, where he became so thin and, but he wasn't manifesting any pain, and even with our friend Rajendra he was very calm at that point. And I heard also Shamali. Shamali was, uh, Murder says it was just like she was just waiting to get on the airplane. There was no fear, anxiety, you know, like that. She'd been very fortunate, had a very great association, you know. So it's a little late. Any comments or questions? Hare Krishna. Okay. We have any locals? Okay. Go ahead, Vijay Krishna Prabhu. Uh, yes, Travida Prabhu, thank you for your wonderful class. Prabhu, the, the quote from the purport is, quote, death comes always at the right time, end quote. Mm -hmm. So, Prabhu, uh, my question is, when death decides to kill someone, is it that she does it um, whimsically? Or is it that she does it because she is following following the orders or the instructions of a master? And if there is okay. a master, no, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, the, the accent. Who, who's doing the killing? Death. death. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the, when death decides to kill someone, is it that she does it whimsically, or is it that she does it? Uh, like following uh, uh, the orders or instructions of a master. And if there is a master, what is his name? <laughs> First of all, I question whether it's a she or not. <laughs> yes, maybe, yes, or what, what, what right. is uh, her yeah. name? Uh, it's true that in the Bhagavatam, death is often personified as Prabhupada is doing here. But it's it's the whole thing is controlled by a higher forces, the higher powers, beginning with uh, the super soul. In other words, there's a certain playing out of karma, you know, just ordin ordinary person's life, right? And it's all planned ahead. Where it said that the body you're you're going to get is already there, you know, when the, the you're, when you finally leave the body, whatever thoughts are there, and it's the most prominent thought. That's what the higher powers are seeing, along with your karma. They said, okay, you're, here's your body. It may be in another universe, you know, just the, the, but it's, it's, it, it may be an animal body or another human body, whatever. But it's already ready. So the idea is that we, it's hard for us to conceive of the, 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 the idea of omni omniscience that the super soul has. But, it, you know, because it says, Veda, Veda hamsamadita ni vartamana ni charjana. This actually answers your question. Because he says, I know everything that's going to happen in the past, everything that's happening now, and everything that will happen in the future. Well, everything that will happen in the future, one of those things is we're leaving our body and getting our other body. So if he already knows it, he means he, he knows all of the things that we're doing that are, that are going to determine what body it is. So that kind of infinite knowledge... Uh, means that, and, and you know, when death is needed, in other words, death is, is, is uh, if you want to say there's a personality, okay. But in other words, he, he, that death is, doesn't have his own will. He, he works according to the instructions of the higher powers. So all of, and that's true in our life too, because bad things happen. You know, I looked at this accident that I had, which thankfully is finally get healing up, as you may have noticed. And I said, Okay, well, this is a serious thing that happened, but there's a lesson, you know, in it. And I'm not going to go into the mundane lesson I got, you know, trying to cross the, cross the street in the middle, the busy Ingram Street between the lights, you know, and just thinking of it. But just uh, <laughs> be, being more careful and being aware of how fragile the body is, 
and what a gift it is and how we should, we should preserve it as nicely as possible and use it for Krishna's service. Hare Krishna. Yes, welcome, welcome. Come on in. <laughs> so, but Prabhupada says you can learn so much from nature. You know, you can get the right lessons from your, uh, from your, from your environment. So, there, there are uh, these higher forces. That, what is that? Karmana, divinatra, and ajantu deho papatiye. Right? Karmana, divinatra means by the observation, by the, by the uh, superintendence of the daiva. Now, daiva includes the, the ultimate divine, the super soul, but also the demigods are involved, you know. Uh, they, they give you, uh, the, the, this literally says the, se- the semen for human birth uh, takes shelter of a certain womb, and uh, then you're born a certain. So it's all being observed what we're doing, and it's it's the the totality of our activities and our thoughts and desires, big, very complicated, that will determine, uh, you know, uh, when we die, and what our destination is going to be. And so, pashana be the pashabi. People are seeing all this, but they're not really understanding. That's a famous verse at the beginning of the second canto. Is that uh, the, for the materialist, and he dis- probably describes it, you know, the, uh, absorbed in family life, materialistic family life. You have so many soldiers that to defend you against the incursions of this and that, you know. First is a strong body, healthy body. Uh, but you can't maintain that healthy body all the time. <laughs> Eventually, the disease comes. But that's the first illusion. And then the children. You know, you have your children, I have my sons, and the wife, etc. Adishu. Atma uh, sainyeshu means soldiers for the self, to protect the self. But they're asatsu. They're fallible. They can't really protect you. So putting your faith in protection of something that can't protect you, that's foolishness. That's called maya. And then he's teisham pramato nidanam. Pashan. Nidanam means such a madman. Pamato uh, nidanam pashan. They see, it's not a mystery that these people die all the time in, in other circumstances. Your own grandfather has died, your father may have died. So they're seeing, but they don't see. It means they don't understand the implications for their own life. That it's crazy to put your faith in these things and, and take shelter of these stone boats, so to speak, fallible soldiers. So what should we take for shelter of? Krishna. We should take shelter of the real, real uh, shelter and it can protect us from all these things and deliver us from the thrall and, and the burden of, of death. No more death. You know, we want to over, overcome death. Let, let, our ne- let, let our next death be our last. We're all in material bodies, so they're going to eventually go. But why, you know, risk taking another body? You don't know what it's going to be. So one has to be attentive, really. Advancement means attentive at every moment. Is it, am I doing the Krishna conscious thing right now? There's always something to do, even to take rest at the right time, right? And how to take rest, and how to eat, what to eat, obviously. But also in our daily duties, and, and especially most attention with the chanting, to hear with great attention and, and devotion. That's, that's the, the basis of our uh, advancement in devotional service. That's the best I can do with that. Yeah, yes, Prabhu. Uh, 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 the answer you just gave me um, uh, is, uh, uh, brought to my mind uh, the following saying: uh, "By the uh, um, and, and let's use it by the second. Uh, better be better be safe than sorry." <laughs> yeah, this whole movement is based on that. <laughs> if if we're if we're not safely situated at Christ's lotus feet, we'll be sorry eventually. <laughs> Yes, Prabhu. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful answer to my question. Wow. Hare Krishna. That's a new one. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Hare Bo. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Oh. Sure you want.